I'd like to talk about the law of flotation. Um, the law of flotation dictates that we study the laws of flotation not by examining things that sink but by examining things that float um, and I'll explain what that means if it's not clear. It basically means looking at our life, you know sometimes you look at your life and think what should I be doing, what's my dharma, you know what's my essence, you know what's my purpose um, and often we look looking around us and we can't really figure out what it is we should be doing or you know what it is that's successful or why is something successful or why is something unsuccessful what most people do is they'll say um, you know they'll, they'll concentrate on their bad health they'll concentrate on their bad relationship they'll concentrate on um, the fact they're not making any money they'll concentrate on the fact that they're not you know whatever they're doing isn't you know being successful they'll concentrate on the negative economy they'll concentrate on government or you know uh, you know the stuff around the world they concentrate basically on things that sink and then they try to contemplate success from a point of negativity the law of flotation says if you want to understand things that float if you want to understand success study things that are that naturally are successful things that naturally float rather than concentrate on things that don't float so if we con if we keep thinking about why we aren't making any money or why we're not successful um, then we're studying things that sink in order to try and examine things that float so for instance if I look at my life and my business my health I look at what what naturally floats so what what do I do naturally that is successful so for me personally but one of the reasons I do the walk with Jeff Thompson and one of the reasons I do the sovereignty course and one of the reasons I teach is because it naturally floats it's something I've always done it's a, what you would what Gurdjieff would call a natural bias a tr my true will something I naturally do sometimes we resist the things we naturally do sometimes we resist the things we're naturally good at but if you can look at your business look at your health look at your relationship um, you know look at your life your business your success and examine the things that float you're much more likely to be successful than you are if you examine things that sink so rather than sit there thinking why can't I make any money uh, rather than sitting there thinking why is my relationship bad try and look at the areas where you are naturally good try and look at the areas where things naturally float so you might think for instance for me I'll give you my example I am naturally good at talking to people I like people I like conversing with people I like passing on the essence of what I've learnt I do that naturally I recognize that as something that naturally floats if I stand in a room and start talking people tend to gather around me it's a bit embarrassing at times and you're thinking but, but then you just think well, that's my natural bias I'm a natural teacher I'm a natural storyteller I like to tell stories so that naturally floats so I'm able to look at that and think well if that naturally floats that's natural people are drawn to me people that for 20 years have been saying can I meet you can I talk to you on the phone can we can we converse over email or by letter can I meet you and can I walk with you can I be mentored by you can I come and train with you people have been doing that most of my life so you look at that and you think well that naturally flows so I don't have to try to do that it just naturally happens so because it naturally happens and it naturally floats I embrace that so I teach more people I talk to more people I write to more people I concentrate on the thing that naturally floats and if we if we stop looking for all the time for what we should be doing and you know where we should be going and how we can be a success if we stop looking out all the time and start looking at what is naturally good what naturally floats we'll find our true will we'll find our um, our natural bias there's a great film about Coco Chanel called Coco before Chanel and it shows you her life before she became famous and um, it was really fascinating and inspiring film because it basically showed you this girl who was naturally good at making clothes and styling people just naturally good but it was so natural to her and it floated so readily that she never really examined it she just thought it was something she did she never thought of it as a as a business proposition or as a life's purpose she'd be busy looking around for her purpose and then notice somebody in front of her 
who was wearing ill-fitting clothes and she would say to them oh, that, those clothes don't suit you why don't you try these clothes or let me just pull these curtains down and I'll make you a dress from these curtains and she'd make a dress out of curtains and she'd fit this person out and they'd look magnificent and then she'd say right um, I'll finish with that now let me get on with looking for what my life purpose is and then someone else would come along and they would say, she would say, oh, why don't you wear this? That style doesn't suit you. Why don't you wear this? This would suit you. And they'd say, well, that, you know, that's kind of more of a man style. She said, no, but that would suit you. Who's to say it's male or female? You know, so she, and she would encourage people to be individual in their dress. And then she would put that to one side and she was doing this for lots and lots of people. Lots of people would come to Coco Chanel and she would dress them and style them but she just did it as an aside and all the time she was trying to find what her life's purpose was. Then one day, one of her friends said to her, uh, do you know, do you realize how brilliant you are? Do you realize how amazing you are at doing this? How natural you are at this? This is what you should do. And it just suddenly dawned on Coco Chanel. She's like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that, that's true. And she decided to go to Paris, and this was one of the most beautiful parts of the film. And the film was called Coco Before Chanel. She said, I'm gonna to go to Paris and I'm gonna start up my own design company. Um, and her friend said, well, what's stopping you? And she said, uh, I'm scared. This is Coco Chanel, this, you know, this kind of iconic figure. She said, I'm scared, I'm scared to go. And I really, associated with that because I just thought that's how I feel a lot of the time I feel as though I understand what my dharma is but I'm scared to do it I'm scared of being noticed I'm scared of being a city on a hill I'm scared of being um, a failure or a success or I'm a, a, afraid of criticism or whatever it is so Coco Chanel was afraid but the point is she was so busy looking for the secret to success she didn't realize that the secret to success was right in front of her. It was as close as her neck vein. She was so, she was so busy studying things that naturally sank that she wasn't looking at things that naturally floated. So later on, obviously she went into fragrances and she just followed the things that she was naturally good at. So if you use me as an example, I can only use my own story as an example really, I suppose, but Everything I do on my website is just stuff that I do naturally well. I do it naturally. I walk with people um, and I talk with people and I help people, to help to align people and help to inspire people because that's just my natural bias. That's what naturally floats for me. So I'm able to do that as a job. I'm able to monetize that. I'm able to say, well, why don't you come and have an experience? And this, is, this won't just be an experience because it's my natural bias. It will be a life-changing experience. You come on the walk or you come on the sovereignty course it is a life-changing experience and I don't quite know why that happens I only know that it happens and it's something that naturally floats and I want to embrace that I don't want to be embarrassed about it I don't want to be shy about it I don't want to be um, you know falsely modest about it I just want to I want to acknowledge what naturally floats for me so it enables me to do consultancy work with business people yeah, because that, that naturally floats me, I naturally do it. It enables me to mentor people, that naturally works. It enables me to work as a shaman and, and help to heal people because that naturally works for me, that naturally floats. And all of the things that I was doing that didn't naturally float, um, you know, that I was trying to be a success in but didn't naturally float for me, I've just let them go. So instead of getting 80% of my results from 20% of what I do, which is what most people do. Most people um, get 20, most people get 80% of their success from 20% of what they do, but they don't know what that 20% is. The 20% is the stuff that naturally floats. That's what I follow. So what I do now is 100% um, of what I get comes from 100% of what I do. So all I do is things that naturally float and things that don't naturally float, I let them go. I let them. I let somebody else do. That's somebody else's natural bias. That's not my natural bias. So this is really exciting because it's saying you are at this moment in time in the middle of something that naturally floats for you, and you can look at that and you can think, yeah, well, when I do this, this just naturally works. When I teach karate, people turn up, or when I um, when I do poetry, people are naturally drawn to it, or. 
uh, when I counsel people, people just na people just naturally come to me for counselling. People just turn up wherever I am. People, I find myself advising people. Whatever your natural bias is, you know. I know. I know. I think I've spoke about this before, but I know people um, whose natural bias is writing, but they're trying to be brilliant at martial arts. But that doesn't naturally float for them. It goes against their own personality. So they're doing it, and they're doing it okay, but they're not doing it at the level they could do the writing because the writing is their natural bias it naturally floats for them so this is saying let go of all the things that you think you should be and just do the one thing that you are the, your, you, what, the one thing you actually physically conclusively are so what is it that naturally floats what is it that naturally floats for you what is it that you're naturally good at I'm naturally good at bringing teams together. I'm very good at, um, if I write a film, I'm very good at kind of drawing together a producer, a director and, and certain actors and, and I'm good at bringing finance together for films. If I, if I believe in the work, I kind of just, people just tend to congregate around me. That's uh, something that naturally floats for me. So it's something I'm trying to embrace and do more. I've just been taken on by one of the top talk agencies in Britain to do public speaking, you know, keynote speaking, because it's what I naturally do. It's what I do all the time. It's what I do for nothing. I talk to anybody. I talk to someone on the bus. I talk to someone in a queue. Anybody that wants to talk to me, I talk to them. I've been talking to people on email and by phone and by Skype for as long as I can remember. I naturally do it. So that, why not make that my job? When I was in the factory, what did I do? I sat in the factory in the canteen telling people stories about what happened on the door, about what happened in my life. People would gather around. I was a natural storyteller. That naturally works for me. It naturally floats. I think it's really exciting to look at what naturally floats in your life. And that's what my masterclass was about, my black belt course. That's about me doing what naturally floats and, and encouraging other people to find what naturally floats for them. And then once you find it, concentrate on it. And you'll find it, it might not be what you think it is, and it might ne not necessarily be what you want it to be. And you've got free will, so of course you don't have to embrace it. But if you want to be successful, find out what naturally floats. I know for me, as a personality, um, I'm, I've always in, I've always enjoyed talking, but I didn't really enjoy formal talking because there was too much fear there. But when I did a formal speech for a corporate group, there was a lot of fear because I didn't know why I was there. I didn't know what the purpose of it was. The money wasn't enough. I needed to know the purpose. But I always knew it was my natural bias. I always knew it naturally floated for me, but I resisted it. Um, and when I turned into it and embraced it, it just expanded exponentially. It expanded beautifully because I opened myself up to the potential of doing more of it. So it's just a good chance to look in your life, look at your life and think, what is it that naturally floats? What is it that people say to you, oh, you're really good at that, you're naturally good at that. That's something you've always been good at. Then just fully embrace it. I was naturally good at uh, martial arts. I just loved it, I enjoyed doing it. So I made it my job. It naturally floated for me at that time in my life. So I gave up my job and it took me three attempts to do that, it wasn't easy. I gave up conventional work and I trained full time and I got very good very quickly because it was something that naturally floated. It was something that wanted to expand in my life and it expanded quickly because I embraced it. So we can't underestimate the amount of work it's going to take because it takes work even if it's natural and we can't underestimate the fact that sometimes our the things that float for us are so close we don't associate them with perhaps a way of making a living. But believe me, if you can throw a frisbee and you can throw it better than anybody else, you can make a living at doing that. You can, you know, I see people in Leicester Square juggling footballs, making a lot of money, you know. I remember, I remember two of the guys I knew in music, they didn't ever go down the corporate route, you know, down the kind of, um, uh, the kind of, uh, you know, record deals and stuff like that, but they were making thousands and thousands of pounds just busking because they were so good, they were so original. So it's finding what you, what naturally floats for you and then concentrating on that. Like I said, I, you know, I was walking with people, I've been walking with people for the last 20 years. I just decided to turn that into a business where I would, you know, walk with people, 
take them for a cream tea, have an amazing experience, give them information that's transformative and help them to find their natural bias and I'll just turn that into a business. Of course I still walk with people where I don't charge any money um, and I do lots of consultation with businessmen where I'm paid to do that but I still do lots of stuff where I don't charge. It doesn't mean that you that you monetize everything, it just means that you embrace what naturally floats for you. The danger with embracing what naturally floats for you is that it what naturally floats for you might not be what naturally floats for your wife or for your husband or for your friends or for your peers. They might, you know, they might like, uh, I don't know, save you a bricklayer and that's what you do, but you hate it. Um, but maybe your wife likes you as a bricklayer. Maybe she feels safe with you as a bricklayer. Maybe she's comfortable with Dave the bricklayer. And maybe she's comfortable with that with that kind of reality. Um, so when you suddenly say, "Oh, I'm gonna, you know, um, I'm gonna stop bricklaying. I'm gonna join the circus," uh, which we, <laughs> one of my friends did. I, I did a talk at Waterstones once, and one of the staff actually was so inspired he left and joined the circus. Um, and this has happened. To, this happens all the time. People leave and do the thing they really want to do. But the reason people don't. Um, follow their natural bias and the reason they don't concentrate on what floats is because that change can affect the people around them. But your job isn't to negotiate their dharma. Your job isn't to negotiate what they do and what they don't do or what they think and what they don't think. If I listened to what people thought, if I, if I was worried about criticism, I'd still be working in a factory sweeping floors and that was not my dharma. So we've got to have the courage to follow your dharma and be sensitive to people, try and be careful with people, try not to make too many brash announcements, just gradually move in to your natural bias, G gradually and naturally move into the things that float. Try and get all of the things out of your life that don't float and you know what they are, there's a lot of them, and just concentrate on the things that do float and then become fucking amazing at them, become brilliant at them, you know, transform people's lives with your ability to do what naturally flows and for everybody that's different you know I had a guy wrote, wrote to me the other day who I spoke to on the phone and he said to me really I just want to write he says but I feel as though I need to teach because I've got a responsibility to teach and I said to him you haven't got a responsibility to teach and if, you've, and if you're teaching because you feel you've got a responsibility and it doesn't naturally float for you you're not really teaching you're just doing a job by rote. If you want to really teach people, you can only teach them from a place that naturally floats. You've got to teach them to follow their own dharma, teach them to do the things that naturally float for them. So if you're doing teaching when you should be writing, or if you're writing when you should be teaching, or if you're doing martial arts when you should really be healing, or if you're doing healing when you should really be climbing a mountain, and you're not in your natural place, you can't teach other people to be in their natural place because you're divided against yourself. This is what I've learned about me. So if you want to help people, first you've got to help yourself. And then automatically you become a teacher. So finding what naturally floats has an effect. It, it affects the people around you. Um, and that's why most people don't do it. Uh, you know, well, a lot of people don't believe it's possible to do what naturally floats. They don't believe it's possible to make a living from something that they love doing. So they end up doing what they do need to do or what they do feel they need to do. And again, this doesn't have to happen in one fell swoop. You know, if I want to change from being a bricklayer to being a writer, which is what I did, um, you know, that can take time. That change in cognition can take time. You know, that, that change over period. And if you are in that position, then if you're making a living at the moment from, uh, you know, laying bricks, but you really want to write, then laying bricks is uh, facilitating your art. And, that, and while it facilitates your art, you've got to honor that and be grateful for it. Um, and let it facilitate your art until your art can facilitate you. So have a little, this is just an idea to sit and think, have a look at what naturally floats. Do not concentrate on what sinks. You won't learn about what floats from what sinks. Concentrate on what floats and then look at what it is within that that floats. What, what, makes, you know, what makes that float? And you'll probably find it floats because you're bringing love to it. You're bringing joy to it. You're bringing logos to it. And if you can concentrate on bringing love to whatever you do, you'll be successful with everything you do.